Hello everyone, this is Tom. Um, hope everything, everyone is doing well. I'm gonna do a quick and snappy tag, the self-aware reader tag. And uh, thanks Rose from Cali Dandley for uh, tagging me. This is a fun one I've uh, listened to and I watched some of uh, everyone's responses. I have to say I agree with most people who um, have answered the questions. And so I'm not sure if I can bring a lot of uh, new original thoughts to it, but let's get to it. Um, um, number one, what most draws you into a novel or story and makes you want to keep reading, plot character, writing style, atmosphere or anything else. Um, I, I'm in line with the majority here where there is not really one thing that draws me in. I'm thinking though that when it comes to the attractiveness of a book, um, it makes me think of um, walking into a walking into a bar, let's say a place, and uh, there's somebody sitting there. You sit in front of them, and they start telling you something. They start telling you a story. They start telling you something about their experience, what they know, and uh, the the reasons why you would keep sitting there and listening uh, are really varied and so complex, and uh, also based on. Uh, current moment, um, your current mood, uh, the way they are expressing themselves, their personality, but also the content, of course, of what they're saying, that it would be really, um, really, really difficult to make a science out of it. Number two, what is a convention or trope that will immediately turn you off in your reading experience with a novel or story? Um, I don't have a trope that uh, turns me off, like, like the vast majority of people who responded to this question. Uh, I don't know if it's a trope, but there, if there's something that completely turns me off is stuff like zombies or monsters. Uh, I cannot really read anything about that. Number three, what most appeals to you when reading nonfiction and makes you want to keep reading? Anything. I'm curious and interested pretty much about everything uh, in the world. Number four, what is a conventional trope in nonfiction that will turn you off in your reading experience? Uh, basically, whenever the author is uh, going on about themselves, um, when they're actually supposed to talk about something else that is not themselves. Uh, a lot of nonfiction books have grandiose titles, promising content of a certain kind, and then you open them, you start to read them, and what happens is uh, the majority of the book is actually about them. I did this, I did that, I'm great because of this, I'm great because of that. That turns me off. Uh, number five, would you say you read more for pleasure and enjoyment or more to learn and exercise your brain? Uh, again, like most people that answer this question, I think it's really uh, a merge of uh, the two in my case. Uh, I certainly learn from uh, from reading. I don't really uh, have a great memory, I have to say, so uh, whenever I read um, for to exercise my brain, it's great, but then I really need to write things down if I want to remember them. Number six, what type of books are you likely to rate more highly and enjoy more overall? Brain candy uh, or brain protein books? Uh, so it's very connected. Um, the brain protein is a lot of enjoyment for me. Um, there are a lot of uh, um, brain candy type of uh, books that um, I have enjoyed in, in uh, my reading experience. Uh, I've also picked up books uh, only because of the entertainment and only because of the candy factor. I, I don't discriminate. Um, number seven, do you have a sense early on of whether or not the book you're reading will be a five-star read? Uh, has the book ever surprised you in this regard? Um, yeah, generally I, I do have a sense and uh, obviously I'm getting better uh, with time at picking up books that then turn out to be four or five-star read. Uh, certainly some books have surprised me. One example is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. Uh, I remember when I started reading that book, I was really slogging through it. It didn't convince me. The first third 
of the book of first half almost and then by the end of it uh, it became one of the best books i've ever read in my life so that uh, that is a, a perfect example number eight considering books that you've rated five stars in the past uh, do you think you would feel the same way about them now why or why not in general yes um, the opposite is not always true in the past i have uh, rated them when i was younger one star or two and i noticed today that if i go back to them especially with classics they have a completely different flavor a completely different depth texture that i could not appreciate back then the first time that i that i read them finally tag people number nine i'm gonna tag my good italian friend uh, the book chemist uh, i think he's in england and um, he's got a great channel so uh, shout out to the book chemist and uh, thanks everyone for watching